Hello my lovelies and welcome back to part two of our video. This is the three um, granny square um, bag. It always feels really weird. I never know how to call this bag, but it's basically made up of three granny squares, which in all fairness, I have to say, I think I've fallen in love with this construct. So basically I haven't put a pattern together for granny squares because let's face it, there's no, there's so many out there. I will be putting a kit together and I will be, my, well, I say I won't be putting a granny square pattern together. I won't be doing a video of a granny square pattern, but I will be putting one together to go on our Etsy page because we do have an Etsy page where you can buy all kinds of kits from. Um, so I'm currently weaving in all of the ends and um, I have to say that this bag, when you put it on your arm, feels amazing so there's a couple of things i'm going to show you um that i've already made on this bag if i'm honest um so there's a couple of little accessories we're gonna we're gonna make together um and to finish it off so now that the bag is completely together i can then start working on the other bits to embellish it so what we're going to do we're going to make a flower to cover up this bit here um and the same on the other side i think as well um, we may create a, I'm not too sure yet, this video may evolve as I do with all of my makes. So be prepared for me to say something now and for it not to happen. Because I like things to happen naturally, so it will be what it will be. So I'm considering, let's see if I've got a square that will do the jobby. I can't turn around, I've got my headphones on. Two seconds. Right, so I'm not saying this is the square that I'm going to use, but as an example, I am considering the idea of having, I thought, look at these, I hate weaving in bits, but this is just a spare one I have on the side. I have that much work around me. Most people who go who work for themselves probably have files and all sorts. Me, I have wool. Um, and I'm thinking of doing something like that, with the flower being the kind of makeshift um, kind of button create a chain and then a chain come around it so i hope you can see that and this is the nice thing about um excuse my handmade cardigan i'm absolutely froze today um about making your own makes is that you can modify it so it'll either be that i will crochet it in let's have a look show you what i mean um but i quite like the idea of it being on the outside and you know what i actually really like this granny square so i think it may be what i'm going to use oh the way things happen this was an extra granny square that i did um for another make that i've made another granny square blanket would you believe not ba blanket sorry bag hang on i'm seeing if i can reach without having to take my headphones off so this is a tote bag um that i've made in one of my courses um and oh, just putting it together so we're just working out at the moment obviously all the weaving um so excuse that it is <laughs> let's face it this is the reality of a make isn't it so let's not shy away from our makes and the bits that look ugly because this looks ugly but it won't be forever will it um i've made a lemon peel handle and i'm going to make it so it fits across in i haven't made it very long because i don't want it to be too long because i want it to have um to be able to go over my shoulder with ease um and the other thing that i have for this particular bag so again we're talking about bags so let's go for it are ready-made handles so at the moment within this course honestly i've got that many wires i don't know which way to turn first and the cardigan is going to have to come off Hang on a second. You think I'd edit all this out, wouldn't you? But I quite like it in its raw estate. <laughs> uh, right, hold on. I think it's good for you to see these kind of things and to kind of get your head around. Um, so the way that I'm considering fastening it, and I thought it might be the case, is um, to create a granny square um that can go inside of it now that i've made this a bit too long and i kind of thought that last night but you know you like you're winging it 
I thought three would be enough. So th the three will be enough for this. And then rather than work around it, which I think is cumbersome, I'm going to use this to create a lip and then that lip will get sewn in and add extra strength. So it'll go in there. But obviously I've got a lot of weeding to do on that. That's for another day when I feel the need to not procrastinate and start another project in the attempt to ignore um, that. <laughs> That can go in the blue Peter corner, something I did yesterday. Um, again, I might weed this, but I do think the colours actually quite work. And I think I may just make a flower that kind of kind of pops on it, actually. And I quite like that. So, again, this is the nice thing about when you make things. Just because you've made an extra one doesn't mean that you, are, one, took it away, two, hide it somewhere, have it in a basket that you can then pick up and go, right, what can I do with that? Can I make some more squares? Again, you can evolve a make. <laughs> you just witnessed it. So I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to keep looking at it and thinking about whether or not I do use it. Because I do have more of this wool, so it would be in keeping. And then I could have a toggle. Uh, and then I could have a toggle and then work it that way. Right, okie dokie. Uh, um, let's weave these in. So I'm going in a straight line right now, but in the minute I will go back on myself and then work around it. And work around it that way. And then it's just a case of working around all your other bits, just checking them over, making sure. To be fair, the way that I've worked this, I have actually worked, what have I done my needle? Um, I have worked over my tails. So they are weaved in naturally but the nice thing is it's good for you to see these kind of things see people making and finishing stuff because at the end of the day you see so many finished projects that sometimes seeing the reality and the behind the scenes can give you confidence going forward so i'm just going to go back down i kind of feel my way through this if i'm honest after making lots of makes over the years you learn to kind of safeguard your make, especially when you make them for other people, um, so that they last a lot longer. Um, I've made gifts for people like family, and I've seen blankets coming apart that I made years and years and years ago as a beginner. And um, and it teaches you, to be honest, that you need to like look at the way that you finish finish things. We're so in a rush sometimes at the end bit because we're so keen to see it finished or, like me, you hate weaving in. So you hurry it through and then before you know it, you're like, oh. Or, in the past, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made was my tails were far too short, which meant I couldn't weave them like I am now into my stitches because I just didn't have the length which meant I couldn't then anchor it through properly. I couldn't turn back on itself, you know, just to make sure that it was completely anchored. And then the other thing is as well, pull it back through so you hide those tails. So if it's sticking out, do it quite tight and then pull back and then it'll hide itself within the stitches. And that's really important as well. Um, as you're probably aware with all of my videos, I'm very much a talker. And I will overload you with information because I want you to have the best possible outcomes I can support. Well, the best possible outcomes, best possible information I can give um, because I don't want you to suffer the pains that I have in the past. Um, I had a lady say to me today, oh, you know, you know so much about this, that and the other. And a lot of it is just, 
I can't help. I'm a bit of a student. I will be forever a student. So I'm always looking at things, reading things, watching things, watching how people work, videos, YouTubes, just like you are. And I learn so much from that. I'm, I'm a, an observant learner, shall we say. So let's just... So this, so this is what I would class as a, a short tail. Now, I think I've already done this one, but in the fear that I may not have, I'm going to do it again because it's not worth guessing it. If you're guessing it, you know for a fact you probably haven't. I always think that now. If, if ever I start doubting myself, did I, didn't I, did I, didn't I? I know for a fact that I probably haven't. So if that happens and it's a bit short, these needles are ideal. These are prim. Apparently you do them as well in the UK. Um, and they have a plastic loop like this. So if that happens, the best thing to do, take it where you want it to go, as far as you can, and then take your, your wool and pull it through and just do it that way. And then you can do the same again back on itself. So if you do have a short tail, this is what I would recommend. Because I've got a short tail, the likelihood is I probably have, but again, it's not worth it. A little bit of faff, and then you know you've you've covered yourself a little bit. There we go, and it's secure. I could take it through another pass, but I'm not going to. Right, let's just have a look inside because you have this. Ah, see, there's one there. Look, but that's a waving in one, so that's not so bad. But again, I can see that it's attached to there and it's pulling there. So even though it's there, that could easily come out, especially as a bag, because the weight's going to be going that way. So we need to kind of secure it as best as we can in the opposite direction. And then back again, because then it's got a little bit of something to pull against and anchor against. So there you go. It's all inside, none the wiser. And the same with this one as well. There we go. Are there any more? Are there any sneaky, sneaky ones? Oh, here's one. Now this one is part of the granny square here, so we can just knot this one in. I don't worry too much about these ones inside because the inside I'm not, I'm not too fussed about. Now I'm sure there's somebody watching that's saying, oh, I wouldn't have done it like that, I wouldn't have done it like that. Okay, I'm sure there is. I am not the most perfect maker. I'm not saying that I am. Um, but this is what works for me. It's worked for me for years and it's what I still do. And I will, you know, if you can tell me something different or a better way, I am more than willing to listen and, and learn from you. Because at the end of the day, we're, we're teachers to each other. So, like I say, I'm not perfect. This is just my way. If you have a quicker way, I'm more than happy to have it. <laughs> and there's some more here, look, just in the corner. This one's been worked around, so we can pull that one tight. I can feel that now. There's no bubbles. That can come off. This is why I like these ones, look. See that? See how it's bubbling there? Can you see that there, look? Now watch. Woo! These are the good ones. These are the easy ones. That's a uh, granny square one. So the cardigan I was just wearing actually is a granny square hexagon cardigan using this same pattern. Really simple, really mindful. I've got so much content to, to share with you as well. Can't wait. I'm excited. There we go. And... You know that moment when you think, did I drink all my tea? Lovely jubilee. Eh? 
Lovely. So that is everything, the construction. So in part one, we were basically showing you how to construct the granny square, the three granny square bag. So it's so simple and it looks, honestly, it, I can't even show you what it looks like, but I'm sure we'll get some photographs. So here, let's just discuss what I did because I haven't shown you the finished thing in part one. The finished thing, the bag in part one. And my chair's squeaking against my drawers, sorry. So this was made using a bridge. So the bridge was made up from corner to corner on the granny squares because I didn't particularly like the way that it sat like that. It was too tight on my arm, it felt cumbersome. So just that opening it up a little bit felt a lot more comfortable. So you can, you can, you know, stitch it together or put a safety pin and just try it, see how it feels. The bigger the squares, obviously, the more opening there'll be. But because my squares are 13 inches or 36 centimetres, I think it was, um, that to me didn't give enough opening. So by creating this small bridge with using a standing stitch through the centre, so if you see my video on the standing stitch, you can, can, you can extend that even further as, far, as high as you like. So when I've been doing a standing stitch, I've been doing it so it's two chains, um, half a treble long or a half a double crochet long, um, whatever the stitch requirement was. But this, in this case, I then made it as long as I needed it to be in order to create that size and then I slip stitch into there. I am going to show you how to do that. Um, it's not going to be perfect, I'm going to be honest. I kind of wing it a little bit, but you know what? Look. Does it not work? <laughs> so um, I work it that way. So I do a slip stitch and then I do another slip stitch, which then takes me up my row or enough rows for me to then work double crochets back. And I just work in the, on the turn here and then finish. And then again, I work on the back of the stitch and work the same there, same amount of rows. Mm -hmm. And then I created a border, smooth it all off to finish it all off and to make sure all those edges, edges were in tune with each other. I then worked a half treble all the way around and then I created a slip stitch border just to give it that edge and that nice thickness which looks brilliant in this wool. Um, it really shows up. Um, because it's an it's an iron wool, which I think is a worsted wool. Um I'm trying to think of the I've got a whole thing of like names of walls and I can't think of any, but it's a base, it's blah, I think it's about Double knit is eight ply, and iron would be, I think, about ten ply. I may be wrong; it might be twelve. I think it's ten. So it's not much diff, not much on top of the double knit, but it, I think it's a wor a worsted yarn. I think you call it in America. If I'm wrong, again, correct me. So it's a five millimeter hook requirement. So anything that's that size. So there you go. So recommended size, five hook, that's the wool. Um, it's a nice thick wool, but not overly thick. But when you're work, used to working with double knit, it does feel a lot thicker. Um, as you can see, it's not hugely thick, but it's got that lovely like resistance. But it just shows up those simple stitches. And again, I've said it in other videos that when you're using a thicker yarn, you have that luxury of... Um, simple stitches looking much more effective because of it so yeah it's all in all it does bring out the best in your stitches and they do look really substantial and that's really nice i would recommend using the same pattern for your granny squares um if possible um but like i say i will figure out a pattern to go with this but at the moment this was a test and i'm glad that you're part of it and I want to embellish it more. So I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to have a bit of a play. And then when I um, come back, I think we'll be working on how to create a bridge and how to create a little flower embellishment here and whether or not we bring in this section and whether we not we create a little, you know, and whether it, it's integral, whether it needs to be really, because if it's going to affect the way the bag holds, it might not be necessary so I am considering that so it may or may not happen but either way I still want an embellishment and I would love to put some little tassels on here or something as well so hopefully I can come back show you and um, give you some ideas where's my mask on where's my mask on oh. 
Okay, so I've come back and I've created what looks like a ladder. So I create, so the way in which I worked this was a chain of 90 plus two, and then I worked a half treble with two chains and a half treble on two chains. So that's kind of what creates a ladder. So you just keep working down your chain. I'm just going to finish off now, and this will be the foundation or brickwork of my flower. Um, and I will start working. Oh, I've overshot that one. What have I done there? I've only used a half treble because I didn't want too much height um, coming back. Sorry, onto. There we go. Sorry concentrating then couldn't talk and concentrate at the same time okie dokie so that's my ladder so now I'm going to work in um, from this direction so that's the way we're going to be working to the left to the left to the left um, and I'm going to work in some willow stitches so I'm going to start small and then I'm going to kind of make them bigger so that as we roll them the smaller ones will be in the middle with the larger ones outside of the space. So let's uh, start by working into the second ladder. We're just going to work some half trebles into that area. I'm going to start with nine and we'll see how that goes. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I wasn't doing half triples, was I? Naughty, naughty, start again. Let's bring you down a little bit and let's hope I don't make you too dizzy. Okay, so half triples into this area. But let's start in the first ladder. So Wow, there we go. So I'm working around the front post, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Oh dear, wakey wakey shell. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Then I'm going to just double crochet and uh, um, slip stitch there. Then I'm, I've just worked those as a treble. I've just realised, and I'm not frogging back again. So this time I'm going to work um, a opposite one, which will be a half treble. So one, two, oops, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to just slip stitch around the next ladder. So you can see how they're starting to form a little bit. And that you'll get this nice. Let's just see if I can turn this light off because I think this one's a little bit too bright. Ah, is that a bit better? Isn't it amazing how you need all these lights and then Honestly, I've got hardly any lights on here just to make it... Oh, it's that one then. This is the problem one. Right, sorry. There we go. Oh, no, it's still, still pretty bright. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to work alternative willows into each of these stitches, working the ladder um, facing us. And then we've got something to work into. Um... And then hopefully that should give us a bit of a, a randomised kind of petal alignment because you've got some petals that are bigger than the others and some that are smaller. So best to work in odds. So we'll do three here. And I think then we'll come back to the second bit. So I'll finish this one off and then I will come back to you on, on that. Okay. Right, well, I thought I'd better stop because I'm going to end up making this and uh, you're not going to see what I've done. 
So uh, let's bring the light down a little bit lower for you and hopefully you can see um, what I've made. So again, sorry about the lighting. I'm trying really hard to uh, make sure the contrast isn't up too high so that you can actually see what's happening. Is that a bit better for you? Right. Um, I've tried everything. Nightmare. Nightmare, nightmare. Um, so we have our um, ladder that we've made and I have created, um, I've worked back into, right, where am I? Uh, Right, that's a bit better, isn't it? It's not so. There we are. Right, so I've worked on um, the ladder that we have here. You can see it kind of underneath. That's just a foundation or a skeleton, I guess, of what we've worked into. We've worked into each of the ladder joins, not the sides, just the in-between bit, um, to give us some structure. So these were a treble, a half treble stitch. Um, that was a treble willow, um, willow stitch using nine trebles and then we did the same with the half treble same with the treble and then this one we did the double um double treble and then um we did two of those and then i changed my color and i've been working on a triple treble treble so that is this let me show you it's quite easy once you get used to it in fact it's all about how many times you um yarn over so normally we'd yarn over once wouldn't we for um a tre for a treble for a double treble, we yarn over again, and for a triple treble, we yarn over again. So you should have three yarn overs plus one on our hook. We then take it through that ladder and then go two through two, yarn over through two again, yarn over through two again, and yarn over. In fact, I think that is probably the quadruple triple treble <laughs> treble um, stitch. So, or it's a double triple treble stitch, whatever, but either way. So that would be our normal. That would be our double and that would be our triple. And that is how you work it. You just keep going up to until you finish it. And I've done about, I think, 15 of these on each one. So I just do that and that and then in you go. Go through all those two. So yarn over and pull through two until there is none left. Okay. And then do the same again. So make sure you've done it three times. And you just make sure you place in that anchor where you need to hold your wool in place. And you just keep doing that. So just round again. Oh, the birds are really singing tonight. I don't know if you can hear them through my microphone. I've got my window open. It's a little bit chilly doing it. But I absolutely love listening to the birdies. Can you hear them singing? There's a blackbird and he may, <laughs> I swear he waits for me to talk to him. So I do a little whistle every now and then and he goes, caw, caw, caw. <laughs> and has a bit of a mad rant as if I've interrupted him as if to say, shut up, I'm singing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What? Seven, yep. Do I need another one? Yep, I did. Once you get used to it, um, doing these triples and these doubles, they're very, they're not as hard as they, they look. It's just how many times do you yarn over so you yarn over three times with the triple and with the double you just do it twice so you just wrap it around your hook okay so i missed that one because i was explaining and and you just keep going through like the treble first two second two third two and then the last two so let's have a check again one two three four six seven eight nine ten so a few more eleven One more. And then another one. And just keep going through two. I mean, you could add as many of these as you wanted to, depending on the height that's required for whatever it is you're making. Obviously, the more, the longer the post, the more they split apart. So just be mindful of that. And then there we go. So one, two, three, four, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I might even do a few more because I want this to be the last petal and I want it to be the biggest one. So, I've lost where I am. Where are my stitches going into? Oh, it's because I've got that many. It's filled that space, so. Okay, okay. So I'm literally just going to finish this one off here and just, oh, just slip stitch it. Now, the key to this bit is making sure you've got a huge tail because this is what you're going to use to sew back in into your make. So make sure you pull it through so it's completely finished. I need to just make sure as well that this is anchored in properly. So I am going to knot it this time just for security sake because I will sew it back in after. I just want that extra security. So ignore the weavy bits at the moment because we can weave all those in shortly. And then it's just a case of kind of looking at how it just... At the moment, I would just say, just kind of work it around, see what works. Um, don't sew anything into place because you could, you might need to kind of curl this one a little bit more. Hence why I wanted this one, I think. This was a good accident, the fact that I forgot myself and did a treble because I need something a little bit bigger so I can roll it onto itself a little bit more. And then it's just a case of, just working it around really. And then we've got the bigger petals. And I've used a scrap ball of wool, hence why I've had to change colour because um hang on, let's just make sure that's that side. And then we can just see how it's forming and if we like what we see. So it might be that we want to turn it around a little bit. So it might be that you want to turn these around that way instead. So it offers something slightly different. And actually, I quite like that idea. So I've got three petals that way. So again, it's working it out and twisting it so that you know that it works. Obviously, all these weavy bits are getting in the way. So we just need to make sure they work so I think the first thing to do first is just secure our middle bit and then we'll worry about the outer edges in a moment I'm going to do that with this one this tail um, and hopefully it'll be long enough for me to just secure the middle so I'm going to fold this in on itself a little bit like so so again make sure this tail is also a nice length I might just have enough to do this and then finish off with the tail at the end so at least that way I know I'm okay so that's that curl and then it's just a case of moving it around and making sure that that works like so and then you could even I mean, you could even do that, and like we said before, turn it inside out and then work back on itself. So your bud stays in the middle and then your petals that naturally bend out start to bend that way. And you could work it, you know. Sometimes it's just a case of playing with shapes to see how they kind of roll, really, um, and seeing how they all work. So that looks quite nice, doesn't it? You could make this even longer so you have more petals. Again, it's working out what works best. I actually like the fact that they are working like that. So I am get, I'm going to stick with that as well. So again, like I say, it's working with the shapes and actually use learning to sculpt them so that it works for you. And you can play with wool. You know, it's a nice thing to do. Don't just be regiment to patterns but for fear look at patterns look at pictures um try and deconstruct them. that's how i learned to crochet so i'm coming close to my, my eyes again i'm so used to picking my work up and getting close to myself um deconstruct things look at things you know try and fathom them out experiment it's 
you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't have to be regiment to patterns and not being able to modify them. I know things can go wrong when the only patterns I'd probably say don't um, come away from or try to be a little bit regiment on is the ones that were clothing because obviously you're trying to stick to sizes and clothing. Making clothes can be um, a major investment um, with your wool because you're probably buying a more expensive wool and probably buying a lot more of it as well. It's easy when you're working in a rectangle and a, a square, but um, sometimes it's a bit it's a bit different when you're doing. I'm getting a messy. I'm trying to find all me me bits and bobs here. Right, I've lost my little bit of a. Right, I'm going to turn my light on again, see if I can... Oh, there we go. No, it's gone off now. <laughs> so we are looking at the back end of this. I'm just making sure that that is somewhat secure for me to move on. Obviously, I'm going to sew it all back in anyway. But you can see how... It's easy to lose that little bit of a bud there. And then if I've got some weaving it bits here, I might be able to use those as some of my next. Just to bring that into position. So all I'm doing is going underneath and you can realign everything anyway. So it's not a big, a big deal. But you could now do the opposite of what we did before. Let's turn it back on itself. And these stitches that are kind of, sorry, I'm doing it again. Stop it, Michelle. Keep your hands under that camera. Whoa, get annoyed with myself. And you can just bring them together so they're like that. So it's not an official flower, but it is something you, like I say, you can play with, you can add more rows. I've only added, um, I only did 90 stitches, so, um, Depends how many ladders you want in order to make as many petals as you can. I skipped over, so I skipped one ladder and moved on to the next one. So obviously you've got half of the ladders being used because I'm skipping them to open up the stitches. So again, you could you could go mad with it. Just experiment, honestly. I, you know. Because if it's closed, I'll say follow a pattern, but sometimes it's just nice to freestyle. And just have a go at something that's just purely fun and experimental and you're just sitting there and you're watching the TV and you're just, oh, I'll just have a go at making a flower. Why not? Right, so there we go. So I have another tile here. I'm going to weave that in quickly. So if you like this pattern or this construction, I'm not going to say pattern because I haven't given you any details on um, following a pattern precisely. I've just basically said this is how you can construct it. OK, so this is part two. I'm adding a, an, embelli an, an oh, I can't say embellishment, which is a, a flower. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to lift up my camera a little bit, see if that has any difference. I hate shadows. I hate it when it's overexposed as well. Right, so where is my big, big tail? So you don't have to have it on both sides. You can just decide which is your your preferred front or back. So which one out of the, this side and that side do I prefer? Which one looks the best? Which one's the neatest? Hmm... Look at the border, have a good look around before you decide. I actually prefer this side because I like the way that border looks there. So I'm going for this side and this is where my embellishment will sit. Like so. I'm going to hook it round that way. Joe, I can hear my husband in the kitchen downstairs and I'm really hoping he's making a cup of tea. 
Anybody else a cup of tea monster like me? Or are you a coffee drinker? I drink coffee all day because I have a coffee shop. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty much drink barista coffees all day. Proper coffees. Froffy coffee, whatever you call it. We make fresh cakes. We're making cakes today. Yummy, yummy, yummy cakes. can't wait I've made a biscoff and banana bread cake mm, it was so tasty I don't normally like cake butter but I was a bit I was a bit succumbed to that one right so let's just make sure we've we're getting it completely so it's not too floppy we'll just get in the back here and I think that's pretty much it so in a matter of less than a day of, of not even working on it fully I mean admittedly I only had one square to do because I found the other two squares um, but that is another project done quick and easy project if you're on holiday and you're on the beach and you just think I just need a quick and easy project you know that's brilliant brilliant project Three granny squares, job done. You don't even need a lot of um, wool either, which is nice. I mean, I've used a 400 gram, gram ball of wool, which I've got half of a cardigan that I started, but I'm thinking I'm gonna like I'm gonna do a bit of Harry Styles to it and have the uh, other side of it in a different colour. So I quite like that with the little bits of wool that I've got left over. So yeah, I mean, you're probably looking two balls of wool. If you're doing it all the same colour, um, maybe three. But definitely, I reckon two, 200 gram balls of wool in double knit or whatever would be absolutely fine. Um, it's just one more little bit because I'm not, not too sure. Okay, okay, that's all my bits weaved in. That's everything. Honestly, that's a miracle for me, honestly. There you go. And that's my bag. Literally, it's so easy, yet so stylish. I haven't done any tassels, but you know what? They're not that hard to make either. Get yourself some cardboard, wrap your wool around. Honestly, just make sure they're all the same length and brilliant. So I'm going to crack on, and I think I'm going to think about whether I want tassels because I think that boho style would really look well with this. So, uh, but I'm, I'm a bit holding back my wool because I need it for uh, something else. So we'll see what wool we've got spare. Hopefully, some of that somewhere. Some nice cream because I think that just makes it pop. Don't forget that obviously if you're if you're using complementary colours and you're going down the colour theory route, a bit of contrast always works brilliantly. So light and dark. So if this was black and white, it was that would be a nice contrast because it's good good strong contrast. But if you're using um, a greeny blue, then the complementary colour would be in the warmer tones, the oranges, that kind of thing because uh, orange and blue are complementary and yellow and purple are complementary and red and green are complementary. So, yeah, but this is probably more the contrast route adding a bit of vibrancy and a little bit of warmth because it's not, this is more cream, creamy yellow. So there you go. Well, thank you for joining me anyway and I hope that the construction of this bag will inspire you to search out some super interesting granny squares and um and go forward oh i know i didn't show you <gasps> didn't show you how to do a bridge so let's let's show you that quickly right get a granny square what have i got tell you what let's just use this one this random one here excuse all the bits here so coming closer the way that i worked it was from the corner so let me just get my hook that's a bit bigger because it was a bit, that one's a bit too small. So, take your wool and attach. Then, create a double crochet or a single crochet if you're from America. Can you see that okay? Then, on the bottom loop, take your hook through, pull your yarn through, and then only pull through the first one and then pull through 
the second one. All two as if it's a double crochet. Then, oh, I've split my wall. Go through that bottom loop on the stitch that you've just created. Now be careful because you've done a chain there and you need to work into this one. So you go through that loop and you just do a chain and then go through the two. Go through that bottom loop on the, the double that you just made. Make the makeshift chain, leaving two on the hook and then go through those two. And you keep doing that until until you have enough of these created. So you just go through the bottom one, make the chain and then go through the two, go through the bottom one again and then go through the two. Now let's just pull up the other corner of this square even though it looks horrific on that side. So I'm trying to find a side that looks neat. Oh, I wish I'd, I'd have uh, cleaned this up before I showed it you. <laughs> Right, let's get rid of some of these because I don't care at the moment. Most of these are woven in one, so I can just do away with them. How easy is that? That's the beauty of weaving in as you go. How simple is that? The only one that's going to be in our way is going to be the one that's in the middle. Because I've woven all of these three, so I don't think any of them are going to be too much of a... Right, I'm not going to worry too much about that one and just that one there. So that doesn't look too bad now. I've got a bit of a clean up, so let's just pull that through. And hopefully that's a woven in one as well, so I can get rid of those two. And that's the beauty of weaving in as you go. I can literally discard of most of them. It doesn't look so bad now, does it? <laughs> okay, so back to where we were. Where we were was we've created this long standing stitch. And if you're unsure of how many you've made, you can count them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to take it back to this loop here. And then what I'm going to do after aligning my wall again, um, I'm going to take a slip stitch through the corner. Then I'm going to go up another slip stitch and then another slip stitch because I'm going to do half trebles. And then you just turn your work and you work into the first stitch that's attached. And you just do your half trebles that way because you've, you've gained the height by doing that there. And then you just work into it like that. Oh, I've lost where I am. Half stitch. That's, oh, honestly. Right, so I'm anchoring at the bottom of that, but then what I'm doing, I'm also put, using my fingers to grab it again, just to give me a bit more security. And then once you've established those stitches, it will get easier for you to work in. And then you come to the end, and then obviously you need to find where that end is for you. So. Make sure you go up two heights so then it, it marries with what's on the other side. And then turn your work again so you're working in the right direction. Slip stitch into there. And again, if you're working half trebles, you go again. If you're doing double crash, you could just stick to the one. And then you just work back and work in those half trebles into every... Oh, stitch head like so and that is how I created my bridge or my handle
Oh, I'm going to have a gun too low with that one. There we go. So that's how you do it. You can do it a lot neater than that. But obviously, just bear in mind that when you're slip stitching, obviously this is into a wall that's thinner than the one I'm work I was working with. So, um, but you can see how you can do that. That's your standard um, standing stitch there, working the chain and the stitches as you go. Um, and then you just work in to the sides and you just work that way. So as you come to the end, if you're working in the half job, obviously it's going to be two stitch high and you just need to make sure that that does. Otherwise it'll look like it's doing that. You need it to be nice and open and it can work like that. So yeah, it's better when you obviously work into the same wool because it's the same thickness um, and you can't see it as much like mine. And here it's a lot better so that's how you do it it's really simple it's great for when you're doing gloves using the standing stitch method because you can then create the gap there so you can work um how, do, how did i do it so yeah i worked across there and then i created that and then like a little tubey thing there <laughs> and then i worked up that way to give me my thumb so there's lots of things that it's useful for um, I did in this case it's great for a handle so you're literally looking at my workshop right now um, but you can see how nice it looks it looks really good and honestly when I put it over my shoulder it looks even better because that way it just really accentuates the shape of the triangles and it just looks great it looks so much better than I imagined it um, but yeah so you've got a nice size bag you could put an easy, a nice lining in there um fill it out or just have it to the beach put your phone in and um, make sure you've got anything that's obviously can slip out of these little holes but then you could always do that a closed one but i am really really chuffed with it um and i know that i can't wait to make more and i'm definitely going to get this in a kit so watch this space so if you do if you are on etsy make sure you pop over um, and hit our page all of our links are on our link tree on our instagram so you can find all of our links there you can find our links on our website as well to all of our Facebook pages and to all of our interactive daily um, posts. So yeah, there you go, my lovelies. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you've got crafty friends who would appreciate this, then just keep hitting that subscribe. Share that video. Get them to subscribe. Um, and hopefully you don't mind having a chatty black country girl um, to listen to. There you go, my lovelies. And I will hopefully see you soon.